Today we are taking a look at the Tim Holt Distress watercolour pencils. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. Today we are taking a look at the Tim Holtz Distress watercolour pencils. I've actually had these since they came out, <laughs> but haven't really had a chance to get around to using them. So I'm super excited to share this with you today. Looking at the Tim Holtz Ranger Ink Distress Ink watercolour pencil collection, I've already opened these. This is actually my second time filming this since I didn't turn on my microphone for the first time around. And this is Millie saying hi. She's become a fixture in my videos. But anyways, um, the Distress Ink, the Distress Watercolor Pencils come in three sets and you have all of the Distress Ink colors in these three sets or the Distress Line in these sets. On the back they have which colors are in which set which is really great and like i said there are three sets so i imagine they'll be building on this just like they're building on the distress line but they do have the new distress colors in here already these are the tins they're okay um it's the same tins that the other products are made out of this is like an acrylic not a plastic so that's kind of sad um I've already taken some damage <laughs> but better this be damaged than my pencils um, this little flap comes out like so and I believe you can remove this if you wanted to just use it as a tin yeah like this comes out like so if you wanted to just leave them in the tin but I'm gonna leave them like this for now so that's what it comes with and like I said, the distress label is on the packaging, but I had already opened mine. And then they all have the same. Something that I did notice while I was using these was really cool. And I'm going to see if I can show you. So it's woodless, which means there's no cover. It's just the pigment itself. But on the sticker surrounding it, there are notches on the sticker where you're going to be able to um, pull the sticker away there if you can see that and that's all the way down the barrel which is really cool so that's nice you're not going to randomly tear it and then not know which color it is so and also i do like that the name of the colored pencil is at the very end so in theory you're going to remember what that pencil color is for a while so that's a really nice touch so we're looking at set one these are woodless which means kind of like a pastel a pastel or a crayon where you have the pen the a wrapper holding everything together these pencils are the same um, if you look at the back it's a woodless watercolor pencil formulated to achieve vibrant coloring effects on porous surfaces. The solid water reactive pigments are ideal for watercoloring, shading, sketching, and more. Color directly onto surface and blend with water. Layer with distress ink oxide, sprays, or paint for more possibilities. And then it says adult use only. And I think that recommendation comes because they're just very delicate, I guess. Um, all watercolor pencils are delicate. All pencils are delicate. I keep breaking mine, which is frustrating. They don't come super sharp, but I'm pretty sure you could just... Yeah, you can just sharpen these with a sharpener eventually. Um, <laughs> um, also, a really fun new use for these guys is actually with the sharpenings themselves. So we'll play with that too. But this is the peeled paint green. And we're, we can match this with the Distress Oxides and the Distress Inks and to see how well it matches. We can also take a look at the Derwent watercolor pencils that I have and compare. I don't think it's fair to compare the two. I don't know. I see this more as mixed media versus the Derwent watercolor pencils as more fine art if that makes sense but we'll take a look and compare the two to see how they work with blending and so on and so forth um these were a no-brainer for me i did buy these with my own money reason being um i love the distress line and the distress colors and also um especially as i get more and more into art journaling 
I'm really loving having variety of products to use and play with and experiment with. Okay, so I have some Canson mixed media paper going on here. I'll show you. <laughs> some Canson mixed media paper. And we're going to test these out and see. Honestly, the way this goes down on the paper reminds me of like a pastel or a chalk, if that makes sense. Like it doesn't go down, doesn't go down very smoothly. Like when we bring out the dough once we'll take a look. Um, I'm also now curious to see how this will work with shadings. Okay, so we're gonna take a look and see how these blend out with water. So that's actually quite nice. It's blending quite smoothly. Um, it's not just sticking to where I put the color down. So that's really great for larger surfaces. So I kind of like that, but let's take a look and see how the Distress Inks compare. Okay, so we have the Distress Ink. And then we have the Distress Oxide. Okay, so not, mat not bad color matching range. Um, <laughs> It's funny, the more ink you put down matches the Distress Oxide and then the less the, the shading that we did matches the Distress Ink better. But yeah, that's pretty good color match. Um, I can imagine these could be super fun to play with together. For example, layering the Distress Ink and the Distress Oxide gives it this really soft halo, cool effect watching the inks interact. So it'll be really fun to play with these um, on top of or underneath the Distress Inks as well. So the Distress Inks do have some watercolor aspect to it. So you want to be careful putting the pen over top unless, or the pencil over top, unless that's what you're going for. So that's what happens. Um, they do have some of the, the dye based quality in there. So it is going to, it is water soluble. I mean, play with it and see, but just so that you know. So I'm grabbing my Derwin colored pencils or watercolor pencils. <laughs> As I mentioned, I feel like these are more fine art, <laughs> but we'll also do a comparison to see um, how they color as well, but we'll do that later on in the video. So I actually feel like they're pretty good. They're pretty comparable in terms of the pencil completely dissolving. I know that's not what they're for. I've been told in the past that it's for adding details to watercolors and stuff like this, but frankly, it's for whatever you want to use it for. And the way I would use it is like this, and they are very comparable in terms of dissolving the entire colored surface. I will say the Derwent may be a little bit more consistency for the dissolving of the pencil, but the um, Distress holds up really well as well. The other thing I wanted to take a quick look at was how they um, blend with each other. So these two colors might be a little bit too close together. So, okay, we're gonna use Pickled Raspberry and Villainous Potion. I'd say that's a really nice blend. I really like how they blend together. That's a lot of fun. That's going to give so many opportunities. Like I know the Distress inks and the Distress Oxide, those guys blend really well together, but this is pretty cool too. So it's great to see that it blends that well together. But let's get into a comparison on the Distress inks, the Distress watercolor pencils versus the Derwent watercolor pencils. Okay, so we're just going to draw a simple flower and we're going to, I'm going to draw in color one with the Distress Inks and then I'm going to color one with the Derwin pencils and then we'll get a comparison and see. Thank you. 
So that flower is using the Distress watercolour pencils. Um, I thought that was really fun. I loved how they blended together. Adding more colour on top. I don't know, it left a bit of a waxy surface almost. Um, once I added water to the pencil that I'd drawn. And so it was really hard getting some more of the color on there for more blending and making it a little bit more darker and adding a bit more detail to it. We could take, I was going to leave it like this, but if we were to re-add water, and that's the other thing I wanted to note, I'm using water very sparingly. Like I, I'm dipping my brush in the paper towel so that I don't bring in more water than I intend to. So yeah, if I do that, it's just reactivating. The color I added in is just kind of blending into it and reactivating what's underneath it. So that's okay. Like it's not adding more color or more depth to it. So we'll see. I'm going to now do the same, but with the Derwin pencils so that we can compare the two together. Okay, so the Derwent's still drying, but I already have some thoughts. The Derwent's weren't as waxy when, uh, when I went back in to add more shadowing and more detail, as you can see. Um, and also, it didn't necessarily... So, when I try to blend this in, the color underneath immediately just became easy to manipulate again. So, um, I'm trying to find the words to describe myself properly. The activation of the bottom layer was immediate and very, very easy. It was very easy to resaturate it and then to move it around again. And that's fine, but that's not necessarily what you want when you're adding more detail like shadowing. So for the Derwin pencils, when I went in and added my details and my shadows, um, when I added water to that, the second layer, it didn't activate the bottom layer as easily. Like it took a bit more water to activate that bottom layer. So while it activated enough to blend in the shadow layer into the bottom layer, it didn't completely disappear into it. So um, for shading, I prefer the Derwent's, um, but these are so much fun. I'm really excited to use more of these or use these more often. Um, I find my the Derwent's are expensive. The Distress ones aren't exactly cheap either, but you know, it's all what you want to use it for and what you want to do. For art journaling and because I already have other items from the Distress line, I am super excited for the watercolor pencils. I find watercolor pencils are an easy way to get into watercoloring. So I would recommend watercolor pencils regardless. Maybe you start with these since they are a little bit less expensive than the Derwent's. Um, but I had a lot of fun using these. One of the negatives I have against these is I want them to be a bit more pigmented. So there are a couple of the distress colors that just don't do well. So antique linen, or not do well, but they're not as bright and opaque which is fine that's the color they are so like antique linen speckled egg salvaged patina sometimes I struggle getting a good color with same with the tattered rose and the tumbled glass like those are very light colors and I did notice that um, those guys again they aren't that visible when you're watercoloring with them so that was kind of disappointing I mean it makes sense but would have been nice if you had a little bit more color show through. Um, another downside I would say is that I couldn't get them quite sharp enough. Now that's obviously a super personal preference because I don't they're not intended to work like the Derwent Inktense pencils. Um, 
Oh, they're not for finer details, but it would have been nice to be able to get them a little bit sharper. <laughs> and I will, like, I just don't want to waste too much of them, which I need to get over. And I think that's about it for my negatives. Um, pros, I love that you can use them in conjunction with the rest of the distress line. I think I said that. Love the colors. I love the distress colors. Um, I love that you get, you get quite a few in a set. So you get 12 in a set. And if you look at the color variety, it's actually really good. So like you have your blues, your greens, your purples, like each set has a variety for you. So it's not like all the blues are in one set or all the yellows are in one set. So you're not obligated to buy all the sets. It's just personal preference. So I thought that was a nice touch too. And then like I showed you, I love that the label has peel aways to make it easy for you so you don't rip your entire cover for your pen your pencil so yeah i do really like these um and i can't wait to start creating more with them so thank you so much for watching today i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did um please like and subscribe or minimum leave a like and i'd appreciate it thank you so much for your time today